Ryan Ham here, introducing you to the Browning Model 1955 itself, just an updated version or uh, you know, really almost identical to the uh, FN Model 1910, uh, designed around 1910 or before 1910 by John Browning. Remember this predates, obviously, if you uh, listen to the dates, this predates the uh, Colt 1911. Uh, FN made these for mostly for the European market initially, and what happened was uh, uh, Browning uh, designed Colts in America were doing so well that they didn't really need another model. In Europe, though, there are a lot of specifications from police departments and armies as to what a gun should be, and uh, a lot of those specifications required different guns. And uh, FN wasn't making some of the Colt designed guns. So, uh, Browning, being who Browning was, designed just a completely different gun. And thank goodness he did, uh, because this is an outstanding weapon. This is the model 1955, imported by Browning between 1955 and 1968. Um, I think this one was made in 68, and import was stopped. Uh, thanks to Lee Harvey Oswald and the American Congress, uh, Lee, importation was stopped because it was considered a cheap handgun. And they're trying to avoid getting cheap European handguns in America to compete with American handguns. Although they used the assassination of John Kennedy and, and uh, his brother and a bunch of other people as, as an excuse to limit our freedoms. Oh, I'll get off my soapbox and describe the gun. It is a straight blowback operated. It's got a grip safety, uh, although a little bit too strong a spring for my tastes. It's also got a, a thumb safety. Now the grip safety doesn't affect the slide going back, but the thumb safety will affect the slide going back and it essentially locks the slide. This other locking notch will lock the slide back and make a and facilitate disassembly. I'm going to uh, clear the gun now. It's got a heel magazine release. You simply push back on it with your thumb and pull down on the front of the magazine. It, it of course, doesn't drop free. To reinsert the mag, I prefer uh, holding the gun as if you're firing it. I prefer to put the rear of the magazine in kind of at, a, at a, an angle like this, pull back, and then push up. Although you can insert the front of the magazine and, and kind of wedge it in that way. At any rate, empty magazine, empty chamber, the gun is clear. Um, some features of this gun, a really nice trigger that extends out um, to the sides that make it more comfortable to pull. Um, uh, there's the extractor. It's got a, a a bushing on the muzzle that we'll use to disassemble the gun in a little bit. Very small sights and a sighting groove along the top. Um, very tiny notch there. Get that lined up with a very tiny front sight and, and good luck. <laughs> Mostly meant to, to be just pointed at short range and uh, pull the trigger as fast as you can. It's a self-defense weapon. It's not meant to go hunting after people. Nice shelf on the uh, grip for your thumb. Um, if you're left-handed, same thing. Europeans love their proof marks, and this is no exception. There are a lot of proof marks. Uh, if you get into that, you can see what all those mean. Serial number, Browning logo. Uh, of course, made in Belgium, Browning Arms Company, St. Louis, Missouri, and Montreal. And there we go. Well, this is a plaid review, uh, which means I'm just going to talk about the gun. I'm going to disassemble the gun and uh, tell you a little bit about it. I've got a range comparison between this and the Remington Model 51 that I'll go into, and uh, I'll... Uh, I'll uh, just start with how to disassemble this. So you've already seen that it's clear. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back and lock the uh, slide back like that. And then when I do that, I should be able to turn. You see how the barrel is turning? Um, I'm turning it anti-clockwise, counterclockwise until it stops. There's no, there's no way to grip this easy. I've got a rag that I use that I can get more grip on because uh, I try and keep everything uh, pretty well lubricated. So. so that barrel is turned around as far as it'll go anti-clockwise. And then what I want to do is let off of the slide release and the uh, barrel comes off. The, the slide assembly, sorry, comes off completely. If I turn this, it's going to shoot back and uh, and hit the front of that. Uh, what I'm going to do is get the striker assembly and its plunger out. So striker plunger and striker spring. When I turn this, it's going to snap back. There you go. Okay, now that it's snapped back, what I'm going to do is that knurling, I'm going to push on that, and then I believe I've got to rotate it clockwise. You see this? It's spring loaded by the recoil spring. It's takes some getting used to. Oh, no. It's a counterclockwise, anti-clockwise. Okay, and then that's going to There you go. It's going to pop out. Not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Not really for people who don't like a lot of drama, because there can be drama. Uh, notice that there's... Um, not sure the way this goes. I am going to leave it the way it is. It's the way I found it. How it, uh, it bunches up kind of over here, but not so much over here. I'm going to leave that at the rear. And I think what that does is that kind of grips the, uh, the barrel a little better. This alignment pin coincides with a hole that you could see down. Let's see if we can focus a hole that you could see down in the breech face there to uh, kind of line everything up as it as it goes closed and keep it from turning. I guess. All right. Uh, striker fired as you pull down on. Oh, but it's got a magazine safety. Uh, as you pull down, there we go. As you pull down on the uh, firing or the trigger, that little bar comes down, and that bar would engage the, the sear surface on the striker. So it would release and let that striker go forward under a spring pressure. Uh, pretty simple. That's uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the magazine back out and reassemble it. I reassemble it in, a, in kind of a different order though. Uh, so, get my striker together. The striker's also kind of flared out a little bit more. The striker spring is uh, flared out a little more on the front. I'm going to use that to, to go in here and it kind of Turn it, uh, turn it around a little bit. Kind of uh, locks it in there. That similarly, this is uh, kind of flared in. I'm not going to get it to focus, but there you go. Flared in, and that'll catch the plunger there. Okay, let's see if I can get this back together without too much fumbling. See, it's got a raceway in there. goes down in there all right. so all the way back there I'm gonna lock it all the way back I'm gonna put the barrel in right, you see that's not gonna work let's uh, let's take the slide off put the barrel in first I don't have a whole lot of experience with this gun I bought it as a Basically, because I didn't own one. <laughs> Alright, now let's try and put the slide back on. Okay, lock it 
end of the second locking lug. Let's twist the barrel to where it, uh, it won't go any further. Let loose, lock it on the back one. And you can see, I'll pull the, stri the uh, spring out so you can see. Don't know if you can, but there are lugs, or there are openings here and here that correspond with the lobes here. Uh, you can see lobes here and here. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is line those lobes up. Let's get the spring back on. Line those lobes up and get it turned clockwise, because remember it went... Uh, it went anti-clockwise to go out, so let's righty-tighty back on. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, I hope I got that on camera. I wasn't paying much attention to it. And we're done. No magazines, so the gun won't go off. I don't think the original had a magazine safety. This one does. Uh, maybe it did. I don't know. I've never owned the original uh, Model 10, <coughs> Model 1910, or Model 1022, 10-22, which was a modification with a little larger grip and a little longer barrel. I've never owned any of those. This is the only one I've owned, so uh, this is my experience. I uh, hope it's not too limited. Uh, but that's how the gun works. Um, You'll see my shooting impressions in another video. I'm going to dry fire it. You'll see my shooting impressions in another video. Wasn't too impressed. And the main reason, I think, was it's a blowback operated gun. This silly overpowered spring that a lawyer probably told them to uh, put in there is, uh, is a bit annoying. It's uh, very difficult to for somebody with as big a hands as I have to grip the gun and to make sure that that uh, spring and, the, and that lever was depressed so that I could actually uh, fire it. It also being such a small gun, I can't, you know, in order to get the gun to fire with the, the, the pad of my finger, which would be like a target uh, style, or even with the, the crook of my finger going in there, uh, felt and feels a little awkward. Don't like it much shooting it, well-designed gun. It's it's solid. It's it's fairly heavy. Um, uh, it seemed to be decent uh, accuracy-wise. Uh, was not very reliable with the ammo uh, that I fed it, which uh, it's not really the gun's fault. It was designed uh, around uh, brass cases that uh, fired at a pretty good velocity, European ammo being a little bit higher velocity than American ammo. So there it is. The Browning Model 1955 1910, 1910-22, I think they had a model 1971, which was kind of a, a bigger, uh, longer target version that they had to use to uh, import after the uh, gun band of 1968. And there you go. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe, like, favorite, uh, whatever you feel. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Goodbye.